So join in. It is free. You create a profile. Join in on the conversation. Uh, it gets very entertaining. You'll laugh. You'll, you, you may cry from laughing, but you will definitely have a good time. So make sure if you're in here, join in. You got to create a profile with your Twitter or your Facebook or your email. Uh, and thank you for tuning in, new listeners as well. Shout out to Kevin. Clutch Talk Sports in the building. Thank you for tuning in. So, Big Ben gets an extension, and it's almost like they gave him whatever money they were going to pay uh, Le'Veon or what they were going to pay AB is what they end up giving to Big Ben. So, we'll see what happens with that contract. We'll see how many years he actually plays of that contract. To me, that's like the bigger question. How many years are you actually going to play of this contract? Uh, Because if you're flirting with retirement, and and Bill Parcells has said this, if you're you're floating about, about retirement or you're thinking about retirement, then you're probably already retired. In your mind, you're already shutting it down. And I believe that. So, again, we'll see how long this goes, how long he actually plays in this contract. Also, shout out to my pops. Thank you for tuning in. Let me know how you feel about day one of the draft. Also, I had another thought that I was going to ask, uh, but I forgot. But let me know how you feel about day one of the draft um, when, as you're jumping into the chat room here. Marshawn Lynch is set to retire. Uh, He is set to hang him up. Uh, He said he retired from the Seahawks. He came back, played for the Raiders. That was great for the Raiders. I know they're moving. I know they're not going to be there for that long, but that was great. That was the greatest thing that I think the Raiders could have ever asked for is Marshawn Lynch coming to play for his hometown team, the Oakland Raiders, He helped put a lot of butts in seats. So that Raiders organization uh, owes Marshawn Lynch for life, for for what he did coming back, uh, played a couple years. They're going to be going to Vegas. We already know that. They're going to be playing in Oakland, though, for another year. Uh, But Marshawn Lynch will ever, forever go down as beast mode. If you ever hear beast mode again, it's going to – Marshawn Lynch is going to come to your mind. And if it doesn't, I don't know what you're thinking because that's the only beast mode that I will ever remember unless we get a beast mode 2.0 or something. Um, And shout out to my mom for tuning in. Thank you so much for listening. Much appreciated. So Marshawn Lynch is shutting it down. He's retiring. Also, Chris Johnson signs a one-day contract with the Tennessee Titans. He shuts it down. Uh, I think that was great. He will be known as a Tennessee Titan. I, I know he played for the Cardinals after. I know he played for – I know he, I think he played for another team at some point. But he will be known as a Tennessee Titan. And he had a really good year. He had a really good career, I think. Is it Pro Bowl caliber type year? Um, to answer that, I would probably say no, but he did have a, a, a good career. I'll put it at good. And, you know, I think he'll have a career outside of football. Maybe if he wants to coach, if he wants to uh, coach at his alma mater or whatever he wants to do. I think he'll definitely have a career outside of uh, football as well, whatever it is that he decides he wants to do. Uh, but we we have some some guys that we've watched, some guys that were very talented and, and entertaining to watch are now retiring from the game. And you know what that normally means? That means that we're all getting older. That means we're all getting older, especially, shout out to From the Bottom Kyle in the building. Thank you for tuning in. And what what I think is that that means that that you're getting older. But when when former players are becoming coaches, that means you you're aging. 
Okay, and I've accepted that. Uh, I'm not, I don't consider myself old, but you are aging. When former players that you used to watch, like Jason Kidd, is now a coach. That kind of uh, kind of makes you feel some type of way. <laughs> uh, my pop says. Uh, the Giants should have picked Haskins instead of Jones. I agree with that 100%. I'm about to go in on that in a minute. But Haskins said uh, the league done messed up. And normally when you hear that, you know that person is getting ready to not only not only uh, play well in the league, but he's about to dominate. For a team that I strongly dislike, but I'm going to be rooting for, for Haskins We'll be rooting for him no matter what, except when he plays the Cowboys. But other than that, I'm going to be rooting for the for the kid because I think he he deserves the opportunity that he gotten uh, that he got. Excuse me. Uh, so yeah, Giants, Giants fans, please explain to me why you thought Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones of Duke. No, not a basketball player, but Daniel Jones of Duke. The football player was the guy that you drafted over Dwayne Haskins. Now, maybe you, you know, people want to say it wasn't a good fit. I don't care if it wasn't a good fit. If you want to pick best available quarterback, maybe you think that he works better for you, whatever. But that one completely caught me off guard. I was not expecting that. I was not expecting at all to see him picked at that particular spot. Uh, Just was not expecting that at all. That completely caught me off guard. And uh, Joe Button, if you've seen his, (laughs) if you've seen a post of him basically with a dumb face about the collapse on the ground, but I thought Dwayne Haskins was a shoe-in. Obviously, he was not. They decided to go with Daniel Jones. And the Giants have already said that they're not trying to push Eli out the door. So Eli has however many years he wants to play, obviously. And Daniel Jones is going to be there developing. When Daniel Jones does get there to play, I'm not trying to hate on the kid, but I'm just saying, like, there was better there available. Come on. Uh, Mochi says, well, Ben Rosen kind of said something like that. And uh, yeah, you're right about that. I think all the QB in the draft are suspect, in my opinion. 14-17 at Duke. Uh, They didn't want Eli Manning to be replaced right now, uh, says my pops. When was the last time the Giants had a black quarterback? Whoa, great question, Cal. Amazing question. Uh, Gino, I guess that would be Gino was the last time. Uh, Mo put that in the chat room. So, and look, the Giants did redeem themselves, though, okay? We got to give the Giants some credit. I hate to have to do this, but they drafted Dexter Lawrence, defensive tackle, also in the first round. They drafted DeAndre Baker, cornerback from Georgia. When you get these SEC boys, they normally, especially defense, they normally come in and play. So, they redeemed themselves a little bit. So you got to give him a little bit of credit there. Uh, so as we're going through the draft, uh, Bosa, like I said, went to. He's almost a carbon copy, supposedly, of his brother. We'll see what happens. Uh, Quentin Williams, Killing, Kellen Farrell of uh, Clemson went to, went to the Raiders. Devin White, Daniel Jones, Josh Allen, edge rusher from Kentucky. The first tight end off the board early in the first round. T.J. Hawkinson of Iowa uh, goes to the Lions. I wish that that Jelani J.B. Bodie of the Waiting Minute Show was in this chat room right now so I could ask him how he feels about that. Uh, the first tight end taken off the board, to me, that does seem a little bit early. Now, maybe this guy is uh, transforming. Uh, transforming tight end that will change the the slate of the game and all of that, maybe. And I would uh, I would say if that's the truth, then Lions, you know, you got a good pick. 
but I don't know. I I've, I don't watch Iowa football, and I don't know that much about this this tight end. But if at the end of the day, if the team feels good about their pick, then, then so be it. If they feel good about it, I'm feeling good about it. Except when it's the Cowboys, and I got more to say than that. So we'll see uh, how that pans out. Picking a tight end at the eighth pick. Ed Oliver goes to no man's land, a.k.a. Buffalo. Devin Bush goes number 10, and the Steelers traded up to get him, which I think this was a smart pick for a couple of reasons. Number one, you no longer have uh, Ryan Shazier. Um, You need defense. Linebacker's a staple position. So there you go. Shout out to KC in the building. You're tuned into the BS3 Sports Show this Friday, recapping day one of the draft. As you're coming in the chat room, let me know how you feel about day one. Uh, but uh, Devin Bush going to Pittsburgh. Then you got Jonah Williams going to uh, the Bengals. Rashawn Gray going to the Packers. Christian Wilkins going to the Dolphins. Now, Mocha and everybody else, I thought that they would have picked a quarterback there. Uh, You no longer have Tannehill. You have, I think the guy's name is Judah as the quarterback now. Uh, Kesey says, I almost got away from the plantation. (laughs) So, Dwayne Haskins was there. Dwayne Haskins was there and available. Uh, They did not take him. So I'm thinking the second round, the Dolphins have to be thinking quarterback. In my opinion, they they have to be thinking quarterback. Uh, That's what I would say. I don't know what they're exactly thinking. Uh, But the best available quarterback is Drew Locke from Missouri. Uh, We'll see if he happens to get picked uh, by the Miami Dolphins or would they be willing to trade for Rosen? I think I've heard something that they're interested in Rosen. Rosen clearly is going to be available. Uh, Shout out to my man Gridiron Fanatic in the building. Thank you for tuning in. So maybe the Dolphins will address the QB in the later rounds. Let's hope so. I think Rosen is on their radar. Do not be surprised if they trade their second round pick for Rosen. Uh, Rosen is already unfollowed. <laughs> unfollowed the Arizona Cardinals off of Twitter. Uh, he has got to be feeling some type of way right now, but also pissed at the Cardinals. But he can look at this one of two ways. If you happen to say there, you should know the playbook better than Kyler Murray. So you can stay there and do your best to try to beat out Kyler Murray, which probably won't happen, but you can do your best. Number two, if you get traded to another team, you will have your second opportunity, which, like I said, I think he's going to get traded to another team, which I think is going to be the Dolphins. Uh, And it's already kind of been reported as well. Uh, But Rosen, I get it, though. And if you're a human being and you got drafted – and then a year later, a new coach comes in and says, we don't think we're going to need you. Your feelings is going to be hurt. You're human. Your feelings is going to be hurt. So I think we're going to see something happen with Rosen. Like I said earlier, before today is over with, I think we're going to see something come across our timeline, come across uh, our uh, our message boards or whatever about Rosen. Uh, shout out to Shelly Q in the building. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, as you're coming into the chat room, shout out to Holly Newsom as well. Let me know how you guys feel about day one of the draft. So as we get back uh, to the draft, here's, here's the best available players remaining. You have a uh, guy named Jawan Taylor from Florida. He's a tackle. 
You got DK Metcalf 